you're a new agent and you're about to list your first house. It's pretty simple, right? You just, you know, toss up a couple photos and put some details into the computer and away you go. Not so fast. <laughs> I get asked this question time and time again from new agents, how to properly sell a house, start to finish. What is every single step involved with selling and listing somebody's property? So in today's video, I'm going to tell you guys every single step that you need to know as a new agent listing your first property in order to make sure that you're doing it properly, getting the job done right, and make sure that you get the home sold and get paid. So without further ado, Let's get into it and go through this step-by-step -step process on how to properly sell your first listing. What's up everybody? My name is Mike Sherrard. Thank you so much for tuning in as always. And if you're new, welcome to the channel. Thank you for coming across and tuning into this video. Please make sure if you do get value, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm sitting here having a beer. I usually don't do that to be quite honest, but it's the weekend, I'm exhausted and I want to create these videos for you guys. I make a promise to every single week put out a minimum of three videos for you. So I'm trying to, you know, while I'm not outside enjoying patio beers, like the rest of my friends, I am in the office creating videos and content for you while enjoying a beer as much as I can. So without further ado, let's get into this guys. Every single step that you need to do and know in order to properly sell a house from start to finish. So this is gonna be incredibly helpful. Make sure you stay through to the end, make sure you take notes. You're not gonna to wanna to miss a step, otherwise it could affect the process of you selling that property. So let's get into it. Step one, the first thing that I like to do before even meeting the clients in person and before even going through the property, I like to get the address. So whether your referral came in or whether it's something from social media, paid advertising, online lead generation, whatever, your website, however you get this client, however you get this listing presentation, make sure that you get the address. So what that does is that allows you to be prepared ahead of time. That gives you some time to do some due diligence, go through, look at some comparables of the property, even though you can't identify an exact price of the property because you haven't seen the current condition, you haven't walked through it and learned the ins and outs of that specific home, you can do about 90% of the work ahead of time. You are able to you know, run the comps on the MLS, you are able to look at the you know, sales history in the area and look at something that is similar. Also, it allows you to pull title. That gives you the proper seller's names that are on title, and it gives you an idea of what's associated with the title. Are, is there anything funky with the property? Are there any you know, liens on it? Are there any restrictive covenants? Is there anything about the property that you should know that you wouldn't know at face value by looking at it or walking through? So step one, get the address and do some due diligence. Make sure that you're prepared, make sure that you're ready to answer questions, and come prepared with your listing presentation, with the comparables, with the numbers. Now step two is the meet and greet. This is a bit of a lengthy process, but this is something that's gonna help you get a leg up big time. So you don't just meet them for coffee and you don't just you know banter around for a little bit. You wanna meet with them at their property and get them to give you a tour. The reason why you want to get them to give you a tour and have them lead it is because they've lived in that house. You're just walking in there for the first few minutes. They have lived there. So what that means is they know certain things about the property that you wouldn't know because they know every little nook and cranny of the property. They know certain creature comforts that you would need to live there to understand or get an appreciation for. So get them and ask them to give you the grand tour of their property. So during the meet and greet, before you guys sit down, before you guys look at numbers, comparables, listing presentation, get them to give you a full tour of their property, top to bottom, every square inch, get them to tell you what they love, what they don't like, anything about their property, and get them to guide that. Now, after you've done that, usually you wanna sit at something like the dinner table and go through your listing presentation. This is where you're gonna talk about you, your brokerage, some statistics that you know help boost you up a little bit, some things, you know, your competitive advantages. For me, I like to talk about you know social media marketing and some of the innovative marketing strategies that we use, but this is where you're gonna go through your listing presentation and talk about what makes you different, why you would be the best fit for the job, what you're gonna do for them above and beyond the rest, 
and then you also get to go through the comparables. So this is the evaluation part. This is where you need to kind of think quickly on your feet. So what you need to do is use your preparedness from the understanding of the comps you use before coming into the property, blend that with what you just saw, and on the spot, come up with a list price and come up with a value that you think would be best for the property. Now, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about how to get the right list price in a different video, but this is what you need to do. Now, you also wanna discuss the following after your listing presentation. You wanna discuss the list price, what price you wanna start at, you want to discuss the list date, how much time you know, if you wanna list next week, you need to give yourself t some time to complete the rest of the steps that I'm gonna to talk to you guys in this video. You need to discuss the listing process, which again, I'll go through. And then you want to explain expectations. For example, we here in Calgary are in a very slow, tough market. So you can't walk in there and have full confidence telling sellers that you're gonna sell their house in 24 hours. It could happen, but typically it doesn't happen. So don't say things that are out of the realm of reality. Set some expectations, get an idea of what their expectations are of you. Is their primary focus communication? Is their primary focus having open houses? What do they care about? Get an understanding of each other's expectations. It's a teamwork effort. It's a partnership. It's not a one-sided kind of thing. It's not a dictatorship. So work together with them, getting an idea of your expectations. So once you've identified the list price, the list date, the listing process, and the expectations, and everyone's in agreement, that's where you go to step three, which is signing the documents. Before you pay for any of the next steps, you want to make sure that you sign the right documents to make sure that you're covered, make sure that you are the only agent they're working with, and that will give you full confidence going forward. The documents that you need to sign, at least up here in Calgary, is three primary documents, which is the exclusive seller relationship agreement. This outlines the following things and basically says that you are the only agent they're working with to sell their house. It outlines things like your brokerage name, your name, the client's name, the list price, the length of the listing agreement, which you know typically I like to use six months to make sure that I have sufficient time to list the house, sell the house, go through possession, all that good stuff. Material latent defects, you need to list anything that is affecting the property that are material latent defects. So that's something you need to make sure you discuss with the sellers. And then finally, you need to discuss commission. This is where sometimes objection handlers will come into play um, because every agent does reserve the right to negotiate his or her commissions, but commission needs to be outlined in that agreement so that they know what they're gonna be paying the buyers and they know what they're gonna be paying you as a selling agent. So commission's a part of it. The other two documents are the consumer relationship guide, which outlines your fiduciary duties that you're obligated to owe to the sellers and how you're acting on their behalf. And the other one, the final one is FinTrack, which is government identification. This explains, you know, their driver's license info, who they are, where they work, what the intent of the property was, whether it's a residential, you know, property or if it's an income property, any of that. So those are the three main documents. So that is step number three. Now, beer break. Okay. So step number four. This is where things get a little more fun and a little more hands-on. Step number four is scheduling everything that you need to do in order to list the house. You need to schedule professional photos. Don't go in with your iPhone snapping pictures and stuff like that. You're a professional. You wanna represent yourself in a professional way. You wanna represent their home in a professional way. Make sure you hire a professional real estate photographer to go in and take professional photos of their house. It's going to help you build your portfolio. It's gonna help your name become associated with quality. It's something that you wanna do from the very first listing you ever get. So make sure you do that. You also need to schedule professional measurements. You need to schedule sign installation and you need to install the lockbox so that other agents have access to the property once it's listed. And finally, you need to create any other marketing content if necessary. For some luxury properties, you wanna make sure that you're doing a property video. You need to sometimes do a single property website or sometimes you need brochures, things like that. So step four is basically scheduling and doing everything content and marketing related in order to get the house properly listed for sale. Step number five is uploading all of the details to the MLS. 
this is where you're gonna have to, you know, talk to the sellers and get a feel for everything within the house. You need to know the direction it's facing. You need to know, you know, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, which comes into play with the measurements. You need to know what's included with the property. Is there air conditioning? You know, every single detail of the property needs to be listed on the MLS. And that comes down to you having that discussion with the sellers, having an understanding of their property during the walkthrough. But step five, you need to list everything in the MLS in order for it to property go live and you need to set up whatever showing system you guys use in your area. Step six, go live. This is when you get to click the active button. You get to go live with your listing. You get to show off all your amazing photos, your videos, all that cool stuff. The property's live and now it's active on the MLS for every single person to see. Now, step seven is marketing. This is something I love. This is where the fun starts, but this is where most people stop. After it goes live, so many people just stop and let it become a sitting duck. No, don't do that, that's not the way to do it. After it goes live, this gives you access to share the link with people. Share it on LinkedIn, Facebook, you know, whatever. Also, make sure you share it on your Instagram. Make sure that you're doing paid Facebook advertising. Make sure you're putting the property on Facebook Marketplace and Kijiji and everywhere you possibly can. Step seven is marketing, and it doesn't just happen the day after you list it. It happens over and over and over on a consistent basis till you sell the property. You wanna make sure that you're actively working to sell a person's property and that you don't just upload it to the MLS and keep your fingers crossed and toes crossed and hope for the best. Make sure you're being proactive about it and make sure that you are doing additional marketing. So step eight is accepting showings. Once the listing goes live on the MLS, it's gonna show up in buyer search criteria that are looking for a property like that. So people are gonna start scheduling showings with you. They're gonna to wanna to see the property, they're gonna to wanna to go for a tour, and the buyer's agent is gonna to wanna to take his or her buyers through the property. So they're gonna start requesting showings. Now, one thing that I will advise is make sure you actively work to get feedback from the showings. All agents, aren't that great at giving feedback. I'm not, everybody's not, it's just we're so busy that sometimes it is tough to get back to every single feedback of every single listing that you're showing. So shoot the agent a text, give them a call, whatever. Make sure that you get feedback because good or bad, you wanna be able to relay that message to your sellers because it keeps them in the loop and it also gives you guys an idea if you need to adjust the price, if you need to make any tweaks to the property, whatever it might be, make sure you're updating the seller and keeping them in the loop every single step. Now, let's say that the property's been on the market, someone sees it, they love it, now we're going to receive an offer. Step nine is receiving the offer. Now, what are you going to receive? I'm gonna break down every single component that you're gonna receive, all the primary components that you're gonna receive on a purchase offer for your listing. You're going to receive the details of your property, like the address and you know, like some of the things that are included, like the dishwasher, refrigerator, stove, oven, microwave, all that good stuff. Um, you're gonna receive the initial offer price from the buyer, something that you're going to start negotiating after. You're gonna receive proposed possession date, the deposit amount and the due date of the deposit, the conditions for the buyers. Now, typically on a detached home, you're going to receive buyer's conditions of financing and property inspection. Now, sometimes if the buyer has not yet sold their current house, you're gonna receive an additional condition, which is the sale of their property. Now, if you're dealing with a condo or something that has condo fees, you're also likely going to receive a condition that's the review of the condo documents. Now, you're also gonna receive terms, which are additional requests from the buyers. Sometimes they wanna do a walkthrough before possession. Sometimes they want the property professional cleaned, things like that. And then finally, you're gonna have the date and time that the offer is open to. Typically, a standard is about 24 hours. So within those 24 hours, that means that's when you have to get your negotiating done. That's when you have to do all your back and forth and get to a signed agreement. After those 24 hours, the deal is now considered dead. You can either extend the current offer or you can start a new one. So step 10, negotiate. This is where it gets really exciting. You now get to work back and forth and you know play off your strategic negotiating skills and work towards an agreement. Basically, you need to work towards agreeing on the you know possession date, the final sale price of the property, 
and the conditions and make sure that everyone's happy. So negotiate and accept. It's gonna be a lot of back and forth typically and you're gonna to have to pull some strings and, and get a bit creative, but this is fine and this is where you really get to shine as an agent, make sure that you get the highest price for your sellers. So after you accept that, we roll on into step number 11, which is the condition period. This is where the buyers are gonna start going through their conditions. They're gonna schedule a property inspection to go through with their inspector, check out your property and make sure that everything is all good or if there's any talking points that they wanna negotiate further and try and get a better deal on the property. But this is gonna happen and then also this is where they're gonna start going through and sometimes they need to book an appraiser and sometimes they need to do a review of the condo documents where you're gonna to have to work with the seller to get the condo documents provided to the buyers. The buyers are gonna do the condo doc review and get back to you with whether or not everything is all good. So let's say now conditions are good. Financing is approved, condo doc review went well if it's a condo, and property inspection, nothing came up. Step 12 is the waiver of conditions. Now, if you receive a waiver of conditions from the buyers, they're gonna submit it to you. That means that they are waiving all of the conditions that they had in the purchase contract, which means the property can now go firm. Now, let's say they found stuff in the inspection that didn't go well. Let's say they didn't get financing approval. Let's say they just got cold feet. They might send you a non-waiver. And what that means is that they're not waiving conditions, which means that the deal is dead. Now, for the sake of this video, we're gonna continue on as if they did submit the waiver of conditions, and now the deal is firm. This is when you get lawyers involved. After the deal is firm, you get lawyers involved in order to do the transfer of title and all the legal work that is involved with the formal aspect of buying and selling properties. So you're not involved too much after that. Now, after the property goes firm, they're more likely to be in the hands of the lawyers until possession. Now, if the buyers do have a term in there for a pre-possession walkthrough, you need to make sure that the property is in amazing shape before their walkthrough. Because what happens sometimes is that if they walk through and your clients you know, banged up some walls while they're moving out and you know, there's still stuff everywhere, they can go back to their lawyer and they can negotiate that. So make sure that your clients are well aware that they need to keep the place tidy, they need to be very diligent about it and be on schedule. So make sure that your clients as sellers, if they're moving to a new state, a new property, new community, whatever, make sure that they're proactive, make sure that they don't wait to the last minute so that they can get out and make it vacant. Step number 15, possession. This is when buyers are gonna take possession. What you're gonna do as a seller is you're going to receive a call on possession date from the lawyer saying that keys are released and now it's in the buyer's name so that they can take possession. That means that your guys have to be out of the property, whether they're in their new one, whatever it might be, you need to make sure that they're out of there, it's clean, it's empty, and it's ready for the new buyers. And step 16, guys, the very last step, thank you so much for staying to the end, is make sure you nurture your sellers. Again, whether they move to a new state, a new province, a new city, anything, make sure that you don't drop communication with them. Make sure that you have certain touch points throughout the year. You keep in touch, you keep those communications going with them. Because as you may or may not know, typically one client that you worked with can over a lifetime result in seven referrals if you nurture them properly. So the job doesn't end on possession day. It never ends. You need to continue to stay in contact with them. You need to make sure that you're nurturing them, providing value to them, whether it be you know monthly activity reports or anything insightful about the city or the community or the neighborhood, but don't cut ties with them. Nurture them, make sure you, you know, you're providing value to them on an ongoing basis and doing anything that you can do to help them so that in turn, hopefully, you will stay top of mind and they will help you at the end of the day. So that's it guys, 16 steps to help people properly sell a house. I've got a separate video on how to properly help someone buy a house, so if you want to, stay to the end screen and check out that. But hopefully you found some value in this. As you've seen, 16 steps here. There's a lot more than just tossing it on the MLS and waiting for an offer. You have to be proactive, you have to be involved, and there's a lot of communication involved in this process. Hopefully you got value from this video. Please smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. We're gonna put out a ton of new content for you guys, so thank you so much for tuning in as always and we will see you next time.